Welcome everybody to Grab Your Keys. I'm super excited that you're listening to us today. We have a great person that is a friend of mine. Actually, we are both members of the Entrepreneurs Organization, which we will talk to you a little bit later on about this. But Cass, um, I was I had the pleasure of meeting her years and years ago through the Entrepreneurs Organization. She is a rock star woman in being an entrepreneur. She has, um, she's the CEO and founder of Slice Communications, the author of two business books and 11 children's books. Amazing. And I just want to introduce you and just say that I am in awe of everything that you've done. Um, well, so the, the feeling is definitely mutual. Like you have more balls in the air at any given moment. It is remarkable what you've accomplished. Well, thank you. And it takes one to know one. And I think that's what, I know this is not about, you know, but I think that that's what's so great about the Entrepreneurs Organization Network for women and not for women. Like it mixes everybody. But I, I know that being an entrepreneur myself, and being out there on an island was so difficult. And when I finally found the Entrepreneurs Organization to put people together, like I don't talk to you every day. I don't talk to you for years sometimes, but I know if I need something and you know if you need something from me, Absolutely. we can pick up the phone and say, look, I'm having a rough day. How do you feel about this in business? How, what's your, what is the Entrepreneurs Organization and what is, um, how does it help you? Yeah. So EO is a global organization, as you know, Sue, I think there are 14,000 members worldwide. Uh, to become a member, you have to have a million dollars in revenue. At least you need to have your business for a while. You need to found it or have a majority equity in it. And what I love about EO is that there really are three levels. So there's that global network. At any point, you can reach out to anybody in the world who's a member of EO to ask for a favor, a piece of advice or connection. I get emails in my inbox every day from EO members who are just looking to connect and get support. Uh, at the second level is our chapter level. So Philadelphia has an amazing chapter, lots of great events that go on, lots of amazing access to thought leaders and, and to each other, right? To you and I and other members of our chapter, which is over 100 members strong now. And then the third level of EO, and the one that I think people speak with the most passionately, passionately about is forum. Forum is your small group, anywhere really from six to 10 other CEOs, owners, entrepreneurs, in my forum, we choose to meet every month for pretty much a day. We go on retreat. We just got back from an incredible retreat to Puerto Rico where we're thinking about what we want for our future and for our business. So at all three of those levels, it just provides a lot of value. It does. So you, how did you, what type of business are you in and how did you start it? So I have a communications business. We do public relations, social media, content, and email marketing. Basically, anything that's a two-way conversation between a brand and their, their clients or customers or the media it, that influences those conversations. Um, the agency was started in 2008, February 2008. Terrible time to start a business, but we did not know it at that moment. Uh, I co-founded this business with a partner. It was just really the two of us out of our homes with cell phones and laptops. Um, and we grew the business uh, from 2010 to 2012 pretty consistently. In 2012, we sold a majority of the business. That did not work out for a lot of reasons. And in 2014, I bought the business back. And so from 2014 until now, um, we've been running the business and growing and doing lots of other fun things too. That's super, it's super great. I love, I've watched you grow and I love seeing everything that you do. And uh, tell us a little bit about why you started writing books and the latest one that you wrote, how people can get it, and why such a difference between children's books and business books. So the first book I wrote was actually a children's book uh, for my daughter. She is now four and a half. Yes. But when um, in 2019, when she was about a year and a half old, I was thinking about like, what do I get her for Christmas? I mean, she has everything, right? right. Like so many of our kids do. She wants for nothing. Um, but I wanted to give her something that was unique, but also explain to her like basically why she goes to daycare every day and like what I'm doing and the fact that I'm always thinking of her. So my first book was called My Mom is a CEO. 
Um, you can get it on Amazon. It's still available there today. And from there, I had other moms who were like, well, I want my mom as a lawyer or my mom as a doctor or my mom as the executive director of a nonprofit. So I wrote a whole series of books there. Um, you my mom is a mortgage person. I, we do. We do a mortgage professional or my mom's <laughs> a professional. You're right. Yeah, that's probably in the future. So that was the first book and it was a great experience. I did self-publish those books. And then in October of 2020, I was giving a talk and there happened to be a woman there, an incredible woman named Vilma Barr, who is an editor for a, a publisher um, called Business Experts Press. And she liked the talk that I gave. And she was like, Cass, you could probably write a book just based on that talk. And I was like, oh, I don't think so, Vilma. And she's like, I'm pretty sure you can. And I've written a series at that point of 11 children's books, but I had also written a whole series of like eBooks and white papers and things like that. So I gave her everything that I'd written and she's like, yeah, this is basically a book. And then her boss was like, oh no, 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 this isn't one book, this is two books. And I was like, wait, 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 what? You want to, you want us to write two books? And he's like, yep. And we were like, okay, why not? And it was, you know, during the pandemic. And so I went on a writer's retreat and then I worked with a lot of amazing collaborators and we put out two books in July of this year. The first one's called Pay Attention. And it's a very practical guide for business owners and marketers on how to get, keep, and use attention to grow your business. Wow. That's great. That's fabulous. I have it. I need you to sign it. And <laughs> I'm I'm super excited um, that, and I need to still read it. But uh, that's the- You'll get there. Like you've got nothing else going it, on. It's on, a, it's on a stack. It's like two down. I know, what, okay, I know exactly okay. where it is. But uh, I think that that's amazing. Pay attention. And it's so important to pay attention to everything everyone does. And it's a title that's catchy and grabs your, and definitely grabs your attention. Uh, and that's, fa that's fabulous. Um, what do you feel since you're, you, you've done all this, what do you feel your three keys to success are? So the first one is network people, right? Other people. Um, I think other people are the reason that um, I've been resilient, that I've been able to achieve so much. I mean, the EO network, my forum, um, Dana Schmidt, who's my co-author, our incredible publisher, right? Like other people are the first thing, strong right. relationships. Uh, the second thing is that um, what we are, we are a traction company or EOS, the entrepreneurial operating system. And one of the tenants of that is the clarity break. This idea that you take time every week to make space to just think. Focus. Yeah, or create or question yeah. or be curious or process, right? Process what's going on in the world uh, or in your business or whatever. So clarity break. Clarity break is huge and it's wonderful um, to have that time and space. And then I think the third thing is that um, our business is such that we get to touch a lot of other businesses. We work with clients, right? And we see manufacturing companies and nonprofits and um, restaurants and restaurant groups. And we get to look at uh, technology companies and industrial companies. And having access to all of those clients and knowing what's going on in their industries has been like a wonderful resource and tool for me as I think about where we want to go and how we want to develop. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Um, here's my next question. Sure. Because you're telling me everything and the only thing that I have one thing in my head and it's not on any list that you got. How do you balance everything? <laughs> I, I, I mean, you you know, you have a family and you have a business and you have employees and now you have clients and then you have the networks and, you know, everything that you and then you want to make time to focus and you want you for your clarity. I mean, everything that's what's in my head. I couldn't even get it out as you were saying everything because I know how busy my life is. Like, how do you balance everything? How do, how does that work? So I've actually given up on the idea of balance, Sue, yeah. right? Like this idea that we're supposed to be in perfect, equitable, you know, place or, or like have everything all up in the air at once. I don't believe in that. Um, I do actually believe in harmony that, and harmony is a thing that ebbs and flows, right? Like think of a yin and yang, it goes back and forth. It changes over time and evolves. If something needs your attention at one time, the other thing gives, right? Like gives that attention. And, 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 and so because I believe in harmony and because I believe that, that things are like waves, they come and go and they will change over time and they will never be static. It actually removes that pressure of balance. So I don't feel pressured 
to do that. I just know that it's going to ebb and flow and it's going to change over time. And while something is really painful or really hard or really stressful in business today, in a couple of weeks or months, it's not right. right. Like I'm going to, that, that part of life is going to be easy. And hopefully that happens at the same time as like something in my personal life is really hard or challenging. Right. Or the kids are going through transition and, and that's, that's the whole thing, right? Like I'm not pressuring myself to be in balance. Right. Right. I gave up balance a long time ago. I said it was just, should not even be in our vocabulary. Right. There is no balance when you have no. a mom and she's working and family and, and the, the, the pressures of today over the last decade, it just doesn't get, it's not easy. No. And that leads me to my next question on your second topic of being successful of taking a clarity break do you schedule those how do you protect your time i do schedule them i schedule everything sue like it's a little ridiculous and my family knows it too that they're gonna get a calendar invite for us to go to longwood gardens on a certain day because that way i know that it happens um i do schedule my clarity breaks sometimes i'm good about adhering to them and sometimes i'm not um a coach of mine a long time ago gave me this tip. He's like, Cass, you make a date with your teapot. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, here's what you do. Because it can be hard to clear your mind, right? And to get clarity. He's like, I want you to get a teapot. One of the like electrical ones that plug in and mm -hmm. that are clear so that you can watch it. He's like, and, and at the designated time, I want you to plug in your teapot and I want you to watch it until it boils. Just watch it. And what that does is it actually gives me the time and space to like clear my mind. And it gives me like a physical thing to do at that scheduled time. Mm -hmm. And that worked. It worked for me. It worked for quite a long time. Then it stopped working. And then I need to get the discipline to go back to it. Right. right. Sometimes though, my clarity break will be taking a walk. A lot of times it's driving. I unfortunately do a lot of driving. And right. while there are days when I need to schedule calls during my drives, if there are, if there are times when I refuse to schedule calls, and I turn on my voice memo on my phone, that actually works for me as a clarity break. When like, I can't get the discipline to watch the water boil. That's great. That's great. And you brought up coaching. Yeah. How important do you feel for an entrepreneur or for anyone coaching is? I, I mean, absolutely critical. Though I will say that like the idea of who the coach is should probably change over time. Right. You need different people for different things oh, and your life changes. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, I heard a therapist actually say your job with being with me is to have you fire me <laughs> and then you can move on to the next, the next coach or the next therapist. And I loved that he said that yeah. because that meant that he cared about, you know, me and and getting me over that situation or coaching me about that one yeah. that one re, that one thing and i loved that and yeah. i do think that coaching is so super important in all of our businesses to actually give to us give yeah. to us nurture us yeah and i've been, i've been with my current therapist for five and a half years and that's okay because <laughs> we've been going through a lot together but you're right like i've had other coaches either eos or traction coaches we have a management coach that we work with to help our emerging managers be better people managers right we're working with an amazing consultant and coach right now who's run and scaled marketing agencies and she's an incredibly valuable perspective for us that we need in this moment and so yeah i'm a big fan so how many employees do you have we have 15. And how do you raise those employees up? I like what you just said that you have like a management coach. Do you work on their goals as much as you're working on your goals? And do you tell your employees what your goals are and, Absolutely. and have them and how, to, and so to 2023 is coming. Yes. How are you forging your way into, into that new year? So because we're a traction company, every quarter we get together and we do our plan for the quarter. In early January, we will do our 2023 plan. And when we do that planning, we then the next day do a, do a readout to the team. So they understand how did we do on our company goals for the last quarter? What are our upcoming company goals? And we don't always achieve them all, right? But what are our upcoming company goals? And then we're also very open in terms of our revenue. 
So here was our revenue goal. We made it or didn't make it. Here's our profit goal. We made it or didn't make it. We don't get into the, the details or the weeds, but they know where we are financially and whether or not we're on a good track or not. So that's the first thing. The second thing in terms of planning is that we work with each one of our team members on their individual growth plan. So probably twice a year, sometimes more, depending on what's happening with them or the agency, their manager will sit down with them and be like, where do you want to go? Right? Like, what do you want to do? Where do you want to be? And then we talk about how to get them the skills internally and the training internally or externally to get to that point. Um, one of our team members, she really wants to excel into and move into an, an employer brand and possibly an HR role. Okay, wow. cool. Right? Like, if that's where you want to go, let's talk about what we can do to support you with that so that you can grow within that position here in, in the agency. And this mindset's been really good for us over time. We've created new positions for people that we never would have imagined. Um, and we've also been able to keep employees from internship through the first couple of years of their career. So this individualized growth planning, as well as being really transparent about where the agency is going and where our shortcomings are and where we're overachieving, I think helps our agency be a place where people want to work. Yeah, that's fabulous. Who do you admire? So one of the people that when I'm having a really tough day, I think about because I admire her so much is Madam C.J. Walker. I don't know if you saw Netflix did a movie on her, um, but she was one of the first uh, African-American female entrepreneurs and also the first self-made um, African-American millionaire. That's fabulous. Yeah. And so she broke every rule. She went through all of the hard things. Like, you name it, she went through it, right? Like, societal, external, internal, her family. Like, she just, and yet somehow she did it. And she did it in a way that supported other female entrepreneurs. And she did it in a way that, like, helped her set up a nationwide network of business opportunities for other women. And so every time I'm like, oh, today really sucks. Well, it's nothing like what Madam Walker went through. Right. <laughs> no and she was tremendously, tremendously successful. What do you believe the biggest challenge for women is today? I know that women, and the data shows this, are starting businesses at a higher rate than men. And I know that African-American women in particular are starting businesses at the highest rate. But the challenge is, and I think you know this as well, getting past that million dollar revenue mark is hard. And only 1% of women actually ever do that for their businesses. And so for me, it's not about like starting business, right? Like it seems like women are resilient and they're capable and they're able to do all of that. But sometimes getting the support that they need to scale it or even having conversations with other women about like how to do it, that's that seems to be the gap. And I know that there are a lot of organizations focused on filling that gap. But I mean, I remember being in that place, like we got to 600,000 and I was like, how will we ever get bigger than this? Like, I don't know how to do it. Um, but but eventually we broke through and then being able to get the support to to scale way beyond that. I think a lot of times like we as women focus on caring for our businesses, caring for our families, like juggling all of the things that we have to juggle. And so the time and space to think about scaling or even sometimes the interest or like the realization that scaling is a thing you might want to do and that you have to plan for is, is where we have the gap. Right. So I remember being at a seminar at Villanova, actually, and this gentleman was saying, and it was all early entrepreneurs, new yeah. entrepreneurs. And he said, I know you guys think it's hard right now, but getting to the million dollar mark is the hardest. And then he wrote another line and he said, and then being at the five years of scaling mark is your set. You think you get over that hump, but then getting in the five years when you've had tremendous growth, how do you maintain that growth? How do you yeah. keep that growth? How do you nurture that growth? And then you have another one at 11 years. Like he was going through this whole yeah. timeline. And I remember leaving there being like, oh, so much work. <laughs> so much work, but it's so worth it. And, uh, and it's so gratifying, especially if you have employees and for your children to see, you know, all the struggles, trials, tribulations, but um, jubilant yeah. at the same time. Yeah. And you're right, right? That like, it's always hard. It's always going to be hard. But I would love just to get more women over that first hump, right? And, and be able to, because I think that's where and not just me, a lot of people think this, that's where real wealth is created, real community wealth, not just having your business to make an income and support your family, 
on a day-to-day basis, but to really generate wealth. And we all know that with wealth comes power and putting more power in the hands of women business owners is a very good thing. It is a very good thing. Now I'm going to dive just one degree deeper. How much do you think social media can play in getting those entrepreneurs to that next level? Well, Sue, you know this, right? Because you have a great social presence. But I love love what you do. I (laughs) sell mortgages with doing what you do. (laughs) A little, a little piece, a little, a little slice of of what you do. A little slice, (laughs) but yes, right. Like I can tell that you love it. Um, Social is the way that most companies communicate with people. It is right, like. At, on a regular basis, on a daily basis, it's the way that most people now are communicating with companies, maybe outside of a re- retail setting. And so think about that. Like, And our second book, Sue, is called Social Media is About People because we wanted to take away the scariness of the algorithm, the scariness of Facebook, the scariness of LinkedIn. Like, yes, those things can seem like big and all encumbering and like you can't understand them. And they're really hard because they're not very transparent and they change all the time. But ultimately, social media begins with social and social means human. And if we think as business owners about how we just use these tools to communicate with actual human beings, a lot of that fear goes away. And we just think about like, what do I want to say to a person? And that whole book is about that, is about how do you talk with people on behalf of your company or your brand or your nonprofit in a way that'll help you grow. Right. Without really like thinking or overthinking about the channels themselves. I am so surprised that everyone does not use social media. I look at people's Facebook pages. I look at their business pages and I know that they can do so much more. Mm -hmm. How do you get people over the hump? I'm going another, how do you get people over the hump of, I don't want to sound boastful on my social media. I don't know that my friends will like me if I say what I do, if I put everything out there, how do you get people over that hump that they don't want it to be about them, even though their business is about them, they are their business. So there are two primary steps initially, right? So the first step is the cocktail party conversation. Okay. What would you say to somebody at a cocktail party about you, about your business? If they're like, what do you do? Okay, right? Like everybody has an answer to that, more or less. They're like, yeah, I would talk about it this way or I say this. And we say, okay, well, let's just start by saying those things on social. First thing, right? Cool, easy. Second thing, the second step is like, okay, well, you don't want to talk about yourself or be braggy or like that makes you feel insecure. Tell me a way that you've helped somebody, right? Let's start talking about how you help people. How do you help people, right? Do you like helping people? Are you proud of the work that you do helping people? Do people appreciate the help that you're giving them? Okay, let's talk about that, right? Or are there nonprofits or organizations that you support? Are there community initiatives that you care about? Let's talk about that, Yeah. right? Like, And, and so it's about comfort, right? And we know that comfort does not happen when you go ahead and do something scary and like quick and without like easing into it, right? I, I have a four-year-old, so uh, Daniel Tiger likes to say, "If something seems hard, uh, if something seems hard to do, try it a little bit at a time. Try right, take a little time. bite of the elephant, one st- one bite at a time. That's right. Just do a little bit, and then what you'll find is like you start talking with people that you haven't heard from in a long time, like people that you already know, or new people are like, oh, this is really interesting. And so if you look at it and measure it in that way, which is like, how am I having new conversations with people? And how am I connecting with people in a way that's going to grow my business? That's the way to be like, okay, yes, this is working. Now, if you're not connecting with people or you're not learning something from those interactions with people, you're doing something very, very wrong. Go get some help, right? (laughs) But yes, just try it a little bit at a time and you'll see that it has a positive net benefit to your business. That's fabulous. Thanks for your expertise today in social media. I, you know, I, I absolutely love it. And I like watching what everyone does, but you do it so fantastically with your company. What's in your company's future? What's in your future? How many books do we have in the horizon? What's, <laughs> what's going on there? What's in the future? Yeah. So we have a lot. We, we, have, we have a couple books that like we're noodling that we're thinking about. Um, but really one of the big things that we're working on right now is we're going to be introducing um, a curriculum an educational session on how people can get certified in attention-based marketing. 
Wow. So we're going to be launching that and rolling that out. So a whole series of online courses and activities so that if you're a new marketer or if you're an emerging marketer, or even if you're a marketer who's like, I need to level up my skills or I like systems, right? Like I need a system that I can implement at my company because what I'm doing feels so chaotic. We're, right. we're creating a certification and a course for those people that we'll be rolling out next year. That's super exciting. So if people want to find your books, if the people want to find your company, how do they find all this great stuff? Thank you, Sue. We are at SliceCommunications.com. Um, I'm Cass Bailey. I'm pretty easy to find on the internet. You really just Google me and Slice and I'll come up in lots of different ways. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or Instagram or Twitter. Or I'm on all of them. So, so thank you for that. So Cass, you are constantly grabbing your keys. Thank you so much for being on Grab Your Keys. And if anyone wants to share this, we would love you to share with someone. Cass had so much great information, so many nuggets in this segment. So share and like and tell your friends about Grab Your Keys. So have a great day and we'll see you on the next segment on Grab Your Keys.